So, um, so um, as I was saying, um, right now you were, right now I think this is the first time you actually do something that persists on hard drive, right? So it's, it doesn't go away. Uh, the moment you close the application, like data is not gone. Data is actually is going to be retained. Um, there's going to be an actual upcoming uh, lecture about file structures, uh, how to manipulate files and how to save and load from files and stuff like that. Um, you're going to see that um, probably the next lecture or the one afterwards uh, is going to be probably intense because I'm going to cover various techniques of doing that. Uh, but um, for the time being, we're going to right now uh, move on with uh, working with the simple database, right? Now, Dennis and I have actually, this have actually covered the part where he's using an ORM or object relational mapper, where he's actually using entity framework, for example. And uh, we're going to cover that, but after we cover one just small bit, which is um, I'm going to cover first how to do everything manually, right? Because Entity Framework didn't exist when C Sharp came out. Actually, Entity Framework came quite late, to be fair. Um, in order to interact with databases, um, at least at least like when C Sharp 1.0 came out, uh, we had to use something which is called ADO.NET, and we used uh, database drivers. I mean, up until now, we use database drivers, obviously, but we uh, we had to. But but of course, it's been abstracted really, really deep somewhere. So, using ADO.NET, um, which is still available, you can actually use it now if you want to. Um, you could communicate directly with the database. You can write commands to the database, like queries. You write them in quotes and stuff. And you're going to see that in a minute, but not ADO.NET. There's not. There's not. When well, you're going to see something similar to it. And um, and you can retrieve and do all the CRUD operations. So CRUD means create, update, delete. Um, and um, all these operations that you would like to do on the database, we're going to do it right now. And uh, back in the day, we had to like to put hard coded strings, quote unquote, hard coded strings uh, of SQL queries within our code in order for us to interact with the database. At least that was back in the day, and then uh, and then uh, we have uh, and then and then the developers have developed a lot of frameworks uh, uh, using uh, uh, something which is called ORMs or object relational mappers, where uh, you have using reflections you could use and code generation you could actually like that that thing will stand between you and the database and will generate queries for you. And it will just simply interact with the database, right? So instead of you writing crazy query stuff, you will just simply say, OK, I'm modifying that object save changes and just will go and save the changes. Um, there are many, actually, if you are in the Java world, you're going to hear about Hibernate. Uh, if you are in the C Sharp world, then you will hear about the entity framework and Hibernate and the, and the likes, because there were so many of them, actually. Um, and depending which project you are supporting and which project you're going to be working on in the future, you're going to see either if you're going to work with something legacy, then you're going to see something like these and hibernates and stuff like that. Or, or even ADL.net and stuff like that. And if you would like to work with databases in general, you need something which is called the driver. Um, there is the SQL driver. Uh, which uses which we which we interact use it use it to interact with. SQL Server and Microsoft Technologies, like SQL Server thing. Um, if you would like to work with uh, Oracle or Microsoft Access, I think we, I think Microsoft Access was also included. We have to use something which is called the ODBC driver, right? In order for you to interact with the database engine. Uh, I don't know about Postgre, to be honest. I never, I mean, I never, try, I mean, by at the time when C Sharp 1.0 was out, I didn't. I don't know. I never heard of Postgre back then, uh, so I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I cannot tell exactly if you can interact with it. 
uh, with with it, how you, how you would interact with it, with it with, and which and with what driver. Um, but I think uh, majority of people like right now with the, with the current day and age, people do not use database drivers unless you are doing something either legacy or you are communicating with the database directly without an ORM. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to be actually start to work with these drivers. OK, um, I just, just wanted to like, give a quick introduction, like what, what it's all about. Um, so we can actually get started here. So I'm going to actually make a very simple. Um, yeah, I think that is needed here. So I'm going to make a very simple data grid view right there. I'll just simply push it right. Well, it'll be right here. And uh, and yeah, I'll leave it here. And here I'm going to call this uh, data grid view. So let's see. Result. And I will place a couple of buttons for us to test some stuff. Okay. I'm just going to put a button here. I'm going to call this BTN testing config. It's going to be very primitive application, but it's going to like demo everything uh, which we would like to do. Uh, so get our test config, right? So one of the things which I would like to show you that you could, that I want you to know that, that you could pull that off is that if you look at the app config, Right now, I don't. I didn't add anything. This this is a very fresh Windows uh, dot and framework application. There is nothing in there. Just file new project, and I named the project, and that's it. That's that's what it's all about. And when you start it, you have this thing. Okay, this app config where you can hold or retain a lot of information about your application. You can keep here your connection strings. You can uh, keep here some sort of uh, like authentication info, like where the server is located and and stuff like that. But when I'm saying authentication info, not sensitive information, but like insensitive information, like information which is not, if somebody like gets their hands onto the app config, they cannot hack your servers. So do not put that stuff in there, okay? It's a clear text file to keep like certain configurations for your application to keep it up and running, nothing more, okay? And um, in fact, what you could do you could um, you could add here if you want to, like something like app settings, and you can add a key. For example, uh, you can add key value pair to stuff. So you can have, for example, add a key, which is going to be, for example, um, let's say you have a server with an IP address. So you can, for example, say you would like to get to that server, and and usually servers with which hosts services they are usually having hard coded uh, like they they have a static ip address that never changes right so let's say this is going to be service ip okay and then you have a value which is going to be let's say 192.175. i don't know like 89.13 whatever okay and you can add another key. Well, you, I mean, you can add as much as you want here. Uh, you can have, for example, something like um, app name, for example, whatever. Uh, I'm just going to call this, and the value is going to be uh, testing SQLite, for example, right? All right. So when you would like to test that thing, we, how you can actually, the question is here is how can you get this data? Right. That's how can you access this thing? So I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna display a message box holding that stuff. So configuration, um, hang on, configuration manager uh, dot app settings. Hang on. So here, there you go. So using system dot configuration from system dot configurations. Now you, it has to be added into the references, by the way. But if I use the IntelliSense here, it will just inject it. So it's here. So first of all, you need to add a reference, right? So it has to be like uh, assemblies system dot 
configuration, right? This needs to be added first, right? And then you put the users in there, but the IntelliSense gave it to me for free. Um, and right here, you can actually say, like, you can uh, get keys and stuff like that because this is an array, right? So keys, you can do that, or you could actually index through them like this. So right here, I can say, um, give me, give me, uh, what was the name of the key though? Service IP. There you go. And um, and yeah, that's it. So I can actually say here, message, oops, message box dot show. Yes. And this will return to me. Come on. This will return to me. Um, okay, let me just like so. This will return to me a string, right? So app settings with the with such a key, like when I ind index through them through a key like this, it will actually give me immediately the value, and the value is a string. So if I hit uh, Control Five and uh, get this guy here, if I say test config, it immediately gives me the IP address, right? So it gives me this value right here. I can actually do exactly the same thing. I could just do this and say app uh, name, I guess I called it. Oh, sorry. Yep, app name. So if I hit start and. Oh, here it is, I think. So, oh, I didn't close it actually. Hang on. Okay, wait, give me a second. Let me try this again. So start, so there you go. And then test SQLite right here. Okay. So right now you can um, figure out some interesting stuff regarding the, uh, regarding working with, with, with the app config, right? You can actually even push it up a notch a little bit. You could actually say, for example, I can add one more entry called connection strings. And it says strings because you could actually have more than one. And I'm going to have here add name is going to be, for example, DLMS EV path. Actually, right now, I'm not going to do DLMS. I'm going to do something like a phone book. So I'm going to have here just simply phone book. DB path. That's mouthful, but fine. And the provider name. And the provider name right now, I'm going to be using uh, SQLite, right? So SQLite is happening to be under system.data. Uh, SQL, uh, SQL, uh, SQL, and then light, right? So that's, that's the uh, here. And right now, the connection string. I have to give it a path to the actual database file, right? Um, I'm actually going to be, I'm hard coding stuff because I'm not going to, I'm actually not going to change these things. I mean, it's, it has, this shouldn't be changing, by the way. Um, but, but we would like to put a relative path to this. I would like to say that this database file is going to always exist beside my exe. So what I can do is just simply put a um, uh, dot backslash. Like this, I'm gonna call this phone db dot uh, dot db, and then uh, I'm gonna put here a semicolon. I'm gonna call this version three because we are using SQLite three, and that's it. So, for example, this is the connection string. A uh, connection string for SQL Server will be a little bit different. Um, honestly, I cannot think. I cannot remember it off the top of my head. Uh, but if it is a uh, if it's hosted locally, it's gonna be like I think the address or I think there was something like uh yeah I need to see I need to see do I have yeah I can't remember honestly there is something which is called and I think there is an address and then if you write in local between braces it means it will look at the local host service if it's hosted on another computer it you will just have to type the IP address. But in any case, um, because we are using SQLite, we'll not be bothering about this too much. And let's see how can we get this actually. So if I go here, now if I say message box.show, 
um there configuration whoa configuration manager okay dot connection strings there is an actual thing for it and um you can say for example zero here for now and you think it's going to be like what what you think it is but it isn't because there's some sort of an embedded one somehow in the system okay sqlite is like the first two two boxes and then uh it actually goes to uh, system to sql client which is something else completely so if I would like to hunt for the one which I actually have put, it has to be like one. Now, and right now, if I have to hit a five, and right now you see it's system dot data to SQLite. Um, so um, so yeah, it happens to be like whatever you are adding, it's gonna be uh, the same thing. And if I actually take this out and I say, give me the connection string, for example, and it will give me the first two. Uh, custom ones which I've added, and then SQLite is the provider. And right now, here's my connection string, right? So this is the location where the database should go, and this is the version, which is totally fine. Okay, so right now you know how to at least like if you go into the app config uh, file, you know how to add your own keys, whatever app settings you would like to put, for example, maybe some colors for your application to behave in, maybe some settings specific to your application you would like to put. This is, you can put all whatever you would like, add key and the values and you are good to go. And here's how it looks like if you would like to have your own connection string, which we're going to utilize right now. And we just use the relative path in order to say, okay, whatever, wherever the EXE is located, it just beside it right away. If it's going to be located Beside the exe, so exe, uh, where is your executable? So if I actually go here and um, go to bin, hang on a second. Uh, okay. Oh, give me a minute here. Okay, so if I have here a folder like this, so this is where my demo is, right? Um, if I had, for example, a folder here that has, for example, something like uh, my DB folder, for example, and you would like to look at your database here, it should have been something like slash my DB folder, and then and then the file will be here, okay? So that's that's the um, that's the basic idea, but I'm not gonna do that. So um, I mean, I don't need to anyway. So there we go. Okay. Now that we know about this, let's actually talk about how we can generate um, the the actual SQL file, right? Um, so I'm gonna make um, I'm gonna make something like a, a class. I'm gonna call this a uh, manual DB connection, I guess. This is totally wrong name, but but uh, I yeah, I mean we are demoing stuff, and um, and we need first of all we need to add the uh, SQLite light uh, um, dependencies. So I'm gonna go to update. Sorry, browse. I'm gonna write here. Up oh, there we go and curious so system.data.sqlite it's actually 14 million downloads at by the time of this recording or this uh, class and if i look at the dependencies which will it install it will install for me everything including entity framework which i need um also the core version of it so yeah okay it will install everything which i need so all what i need to do is just simply select that one and install
yes, please. And I accept. Let's hope they will not come and knock on my door and say, we take your leg. Please you accept it without reading. Anyway, so. Uh, what else right now? So what can we do uh, with this? Now this is actually has been installed. <clears throat> this is going to be public. And um, I'm going to have a public SQLite connection. I'm going to call this connection. Get and set. Because I would like to rely on this connection every time I would like to. Uh, because you, by the way, when you're trying to work with the database, you need to establish a connection. Once you are done, so you open a you open a communication channel, you stream your data, whatever you would like to it, and then once you are done, you close the communication channel. This is how this is as simple as it gets. There is nothing uh, super fancy about this. So uh, I'm gonna have a, a a constructor, and I'm gonna have a connection equals to new SQLite connection, and right here I have to provide my actual data source, by the way. Um, and the data source, it's actually happened to be in the. Oh, yeah, by the way, once I actually installed this thing. Um, as you can see right now, it just. Um, once I saw SQLite, it just added a bunch of other things as well. I think I need to remove this little guy because it will cause me crazy problems later exceptions and whatnot um so uh, let's see yeah so the connection string is right here actually right so it's it's actually right 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 here so i'm gonna i'm gonna actually try to steal this even though i'm worried that it will pick this one up and it will cause problems but hey let me actually give this one a try uh so i'm gonna mm, let me actually cheat a bit and grab from here this one so I'm going to grab this guy. And let's see if it will work. OK, so once you are establishing the connection, then this is OK. Um, now, in fact, I think oh, when I think about this, this is going to be actually a problem because if I. I need to put this here. OK, now. Um, First of all, we need to create the database file. Now, if you are using, um, hang on, DB Viewer or DB Browser for SQLite, like this guy, for example, uh, which you can download from, 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 hang on, uh, DB Viewer or DB Browser. Here it is. This is an actual, um, it's an actual project. I think it's, is it open source? I don't know. I never looked. Ah, it is open source. Yeah, so you can actually look at the source code and stuff. It's written in ah, it's written in C++, which is great. So um, you can go ahead and download that. And then once you are done downloading it from here, you install this or extract it or whatever, and then you can actually have um, this thing. Now, this application. Um, if you would like to create a new database, you just simply create a new database button and then you save the file somewhere and you are good to go. However, we are creating everything from scratch. So first of all, um, just a quick heads up, we say system.io.file.exist. Uh, so because we don't want to generate the file every time we create a connection, if it exists, just please keep it. If it doesn't, just create it. So I'm going to have here, um, dot slash um, phone db dot db. There we go. If it doesn't exist, just please create it. And in fact, I'm going to just, because it's a single file, SQLite connection dot create file. And right here, I'm just going to have, um, you can actually like take this out in a, you can take this out in a, in a, in a variable or just simply grab it from here, like grab just the, 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 the name of the file from here, but it doesn't matter. 
and yeah, let's actually give this a try. So if I actually go ahead and well, let's see right now, moment of truth, if this will actually be bothered by it, if it will be, then I'll just simply like, you know, um, I'll just simply like hard code it and that's it. Because it's going to be, this connection string is going to be used later actually with entity framework. Uh, here it's going to be create DB file. And I'll expand this thing. BTN file. And double click. So um, right here I can just simply say manual DB connection, actually var connection equals to new manual DB connection. And that's it. Because in the constructor I'm already um, because in the constructor, I'm already creating the files and that's it. And I'm, I'm saying establishing the connection. Actually, yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. Okay. And uh, let's try this. Let's see if it will, uh, it will complain about this. So here you go. And moment of truth. Okay. Nothing actually complained. So let's see. Do we still have? Do we Ah, there we go. Here it is. Uh, here is the file. So here's my exe. And here's my file. And if I actually go ahead and try to open it, it's going to be just empty file. Right? It doesn't have any tables, indices, views, triggers, nothing. It's just, it's just an empty file. There is nothing in there. Right? right. All right, good. Um, now that we have... Um, now that we have a database file created, I'll actually like keep this guy here for a minute. This screen. Let's actually try to create a table and start, um, you know, start doing things. Um, insert, update, delete. So do the cruds. So I'm going to have here. This one actually like this create the DB file. Right now, this will create the table, I guess. Um, so it's gonna be create table. And I'm gonna name this BTN create table. Double click. So here, um, now that this is actually has been um this uh, sorry now that this file has been created once if it exists it will not be recreated again so it will be the same all the time so i'm gonna have here um let me show a small trick which again which i'm going to talk about later again uh at a certain point in time uh so sqlite equals to new manual db connection oops Actually, I'm going to call this connection, to be honest. Yeah. And um, what this is, is um, I think I've mentioned it before to you guys, maybe. Uh, this using means that if you are having, because if you're having a native resource, once you are done with it, you need to dispose it. And using is simply calling the I disposable dispose interface, uh, I disposable interface dispose method. Um, so, for example, here, if the connection implements the I disposable interface, once you are done, once I reach here, the, this, the connection will be removed from, from memory. Okay. So, of course, it gives me an error because this guy needs to be, you know, implementing. I disposable interface. So let's actually do that real quick. Uh, and it's actually quite simple in our case. I'm not saying that this is um, a production right thing, but but I think it's good enough for our use case for now. So I'm saying connection dot uh, not dispose but close because once you are done with the connection, you have to close it. You you shouldn't open it. By the way, I think as far as I remember in uh, yeah, so when we were using ADO.NET back in the early days, you had to close the connection in order for the commit to happen. 
or for the um, for the query to execute properly. If you keep the connection open, I think the query will not be finishing executing as far as I remember. I mean, it's man, it's been like all it's like what twenty years already. Uh, it's it's really difficult to remember how you know I know it. I haven't worked with ADO since really a long time. But so anyway, connection dot dispose. And you dispose the connection. So once you are done with that, you just simply dispose the connection because SQLite probably already the developers have already implemented have already implemented the I disposable interface correctly. So close the connection, dispose the thing. Um, let's see. So right now it will not complain anymore. So I'm going to say connection dot open. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah, and right now it's more. It's funny. OK, hang on. Let me actually rename this back. Sorry. Uh, SQL. Yeah, SQL light fine. Because it's connection dot connection open. It's just kind of crazy. And um, right now I'm going to write pure SQL code, which is the same thing which you have written in introduction to databases. So if I say, um, yeah, var query equal to uh, create table. Uh, Phones. Phones. And then I provide in the stuff. So number. Actually, I'm going to first have a ID. Uh, in. Integer. Uh, primary key. Uh, o to increment, and I hope I will not misspell anything. This is actually quite error prone, and it's actually not that not that good of an idea uh, to have. Whoops. Um, to have something like this, comma, number, which is going to be, for example, integer. I'm just going to have very simple uh, two column. Table and that's it. And again, you guys have done this in introduction to databases. This is nothing new. Um, so I'm going to have here a SQL light command. And right now you need to talk. You need to had to issue commands to the database. So I'm going to have here a command equals to new SQL light command with the query. Thank you very much. And it ha you have to tell it which connection is going to use. So I'm going to say SQL light dot connection. It's better to provide it there. Now, as you can see here, like also the recommendation already tells me, um, command dot execute non query right away. Okay, because if you actually just simply sit down and you don't do anything, nothing will happen until you say please execute. And execute non query means um, you execute something which you don't expect a return. However, it will tell you how much of a success it happened. So. For example, if you update multiple records or you upload, update a row, it will say how many rows has been affected in your query, for example. Okay, uh, so this one returns to you an int, as you can see here. It says, there you go. So return the number of rows inserted, updated, or affected by such a query you already have written. Now, this is all clear. So let's actually look at five here. And let's create a table. Now that's fun. Um, invalid connection string format for part. Da, 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 da. Um, hmm? Hmm. Um, Okay, that's weird. So it created the database successfully. Now it doesn't like the idea of creating a table. Uh, hang on, let me let me read that again. So when I had to create a table, the connection string format no equal sign found. No equal sign. No equal sign. So app config.
Could it be that this is causing it a problem? Hang on, let's see. I take this out for a second. Just for a second. And I'm just wondering, like, or did I put the, the, the thing wrong? I don't know. No equal sign found. What the heck? Uh, I don't know if, if it makes a difference. I think there is a, you have to put like, uh, like database name or something like that equals to this or database path. I don't know if that's it. You have to name it right. Hmm? Sorry, come again. Uh, I don't know if you have to uh, provide like the uh, database name. Here. Or where you meant? Or in the where connection to... string. In the connection string. I don't know. If mm. you, uh, I don't know. I'll ask you a light. Uh, but... mm. You mean like, for example, um, wait, 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 wait. Uh, here. And when I actually provide the connection, I provide it like here, for example, like this, isn't it? Let's see, like this. Some yeah, I think we well, let me see. I, a I, data source. I don't know if if you have to let's say like data source equals to this and this or a... already the data source has been already done here. So let me actually see this one too. Uh yeah, the connection string here. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that I know about the data source equals to the name of the database, like immediately the location for it. I mean, I know that you can do this. And then the name of the and then you you, you mention immediately like the name of the database right here. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I wanted to actually to see if I can actually like grab it from there right away. Let's see if it will actually comply. I don't know. Uh, great table. Nah. It doesn't want to. Um, all right, fine by me then. Uh, I think. Okay, let me actually give this one more try. One one more thing here. So if I actually say uh, data source equals to that plus that, I mean, even though even though it can be resolved by hard coding the string, but I'm really fancying this idea of using it from the communication manager or sorry from the app config right away. Oh, there we go. It worked. Uh, so if I actually go here and if I refresh my database, which I could swear it had a button for it. There we go. No. And debug. Close database. Open database. Oh, there we go. So here you go. Here's the phones. And here is the. ID and number, which I've already added. So if I actually go and modify the table, you can see here I have the phones table. It says that I have already an ID integer on a number integer, and it says that the primary key is an auto increment. And as you can see here, it already has been checked. You can actually modify it from here, by the way, if you want to. Uh, but, uh, and you can actually like, as you can see here, it says not null right now and so on and so forth. So you can do all sorts of interesting stuff right there right so right now you have a phone table with id and a number which is perfect right now we got something going yeah so probably i should have added this guy first um but thanks for the for jumping in for that one um i really appreciate it no problem no problem all right so um now that we created a table now we can actually do some interesting stuff Let's say you would like to insert uh, insert some records, right? Uh, let's see, manual DB connection, this one. Uh, first of all, we need to add a button for it, I forgot. So right here, it's going to be BTN. Where's my, well, there you go. Insert. Yeah, just call it insert. Um, I'm going to call this BTN. Insert manual. 
And right here, I'm just going to copy this thing, paste it right there because I need this. Uh, the query will change. I'm going to open the connection definitely. Uh, the command will be the same because you need to own, you need to create a command object and then you execute it, right? So let's see. I can actually make something like this. So insert into phones, and I will just simply because the ID is auto increment, I don't need to touch it. All what I need to do is just insert the phone number. So I'm going to have here just number, oh. number values and then right now you need to add this interesting bit at number and this is going to allow you to inject your own stuff from the t-shop side and you will see in a minute how so once you do that you create the sqlite command with a sql connection which is okay and then you're going to say sqlite uh sorry so command dot command text is going to equal to the query actually. So it is the same thing as this guy, right? So as if you have done this, right? So right now you said like so. So there's the command text if you want to, but I don't, I will not actually use it right now. Command dot parameters dot add with value. And right now you have to say what you would like to replace with what. So I said add number. And be careful, it has to be identical to this. And uh, and then right now you can add your own number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, for example, right? And once you are done, you execute non-query. This will tell you how many rows affect it. So right now you'll insert only one row, right? One record. So it will should return to you one. So, but in any case, let's actually hit F5. I'm gonna hit insert. And if I go to my database, refresh, we get actually this record, right? So let's actually have more fun with this guy. Uh, let's actually change this to, uh, uh, I don't know, it's a, okay, the opposite one. Obviously I'm hard coding stuff. You could have just simply created a text box and right now you can do all sorts of other things, right? Um, maybe I should do that. Um, 8888, for example. Yeah, I should have added the text box just for that. Insert. And let me just grab really a text box. This is going to be a pain to recompile every time. Oh, there we go. I'm just going to, before here, I'm going to call this txt input. And the moment I insert, I just simply say um, txt input.text. And this is it. Um, whatever is in the text box, just put it there. Now, obviously, it has to be like numbers. Otherwise, I don't know what will happen. But, so this one, insert. I could have just cleared the text box 66. Insert. And I'll three to three. Insert. Whoops. So let me uh, close this and let us refresh this. And right now, I have a bunch of numbers in there. Okay. Beautiful, great. Now we know how to insert stuff. Let's actually see how can we how can we update stuff, right? I would like to update something. So I all what I can do here is I simply say private void. Ah, sorry. Again, I need a button for that. Oh, button, button, button. Right here. Or update. You can see right now where this is going. This is actually super. Uh, this is like now became super like straightforward. There's nothing fancy about this anymore. All what you just simply do, you do manual stuff. And right now it's going to be update. Oops, there we go. Phones. That. Now you need to say, what are you trying to do? So set number at number. So you are trying to change the number. Uh, and then where you need to know what are you going to do, right? Which which number you would like to set. Where ID equals to add ID. 
So I'm going to actually give it two parameters right now instead of one. I'm going to give it the value which I would like to update, and I would like to give it as well the um, um, I would like to give it the value which I would like to update based on the ID, right? Which I would like to provide. So um, yeah, fine. I will leave this here. Heck, I can actually even like put in um, command dot parameters dot add with value at ID txt ID dot text. Just fine. And obviously this is doesn't exist yet, so I'm gonna I'll go here. If this is the value. This is going to be my TXC ID. OK, so let me put the labels here so I will not forget. Because I know I will. Uh, this is my ID. And whoops, not this guy. Where is the text? There we go. <clears throat> OK, let it be here. Uh, ID. I'm just going to put it right there. And one here is going to be value. There we go. So right now we have got some, some going on here. txt input value txt id i just renamed this value to an id nothing more and uh, i will go here ah nothing more okay uh, let's see uh, i don't need this anymore yeah there you go it's just simply refactored just for me which is beautiful Perfect. I think this is it. Uh, so let's see which one would you like to change. So we'd like to change, let's say ID one to make everything zeros. Okay. So this is the target. So let's actually start this. So ID one and going to be all zeros. So I'm just going to just put some zeros. Update. And if I go here, if I crash this. Oh, obviously. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, it's it's an integer. Um, let it be, let it be all ones. So there you go. Yeah, there we go. So right now it updated all to ones. So right now we can know we know how to make updates. Okay. Um, so now that we know that, uh, I can actually say txt id dot clear. And just so we as a confirmation, txt dot text, uh, sorry, dot clear. And we can actually do the same thing right here. Uh, ID, we don't care about actually txt value. And this is the same thing here, right? OK, so now that is, this one is done. Now we can actually update the stuff. Shall we delete stuff? And um, we have we have like update, delete and select all. Obviously, uh, we haven't done select all yet. So I'm just going to put here delete. Obviously, we need to provide an ID, which is. Which is super obvious. Oh, come on. This. Uh, this is going to be delete. And this is going to be BTN delete. And double click. Now, BTN delete. So uh, I think we're going to need something similar to the update, actually. Um, however, I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to. I'm not going to actually have. It's just simple delete, actually. So delete. From. Phones where? Yeah, there we go. And do you need the SQL light? You need this. You don't need that. Done. Right? This is this is what you need to do for deletion. You are just good to go. Um, so if I hit 
a five for this guy. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. So if I would like to remove, what would I what would I like to remove? I would like to remove number six. So I'm just gonna take uh, ID six and I will just simply say delete. And right now it just removed the thing and it just deleted number six, which is good. Okay. Um, now we can actually move forward. So right now we know how to delete. We would like to know how to do select all, right? So I would like to fill in this data grid view. Uh, did we name it anyway? Uh, DGB result, perfect. So I can, I would like to then to put in the data grid view all these phone numbers. So a select all is needed. So far we were like hitting on the database with nothing, right? Nothing is being returned back to us. We'd like to do select all. And a select all is the same thing as selecting where and stuff like that. So select all is just a, a very simple umbrella thing, uh, which you would like to do manual. And right here is going to be select all and double click. Now select all is super easy actually. So if I actually use the same, I'll cheat again. I'll just use the same thing. Whoops. Um, uh -huh, using, so you. Now select all is gonna be a little bit different. I mean, it's easy, but it's gonna be a little bit different because um, first of all, select star. Now this is the worst thing you could ever do, uh, by the way. Uh, because you have to always name your columns and you have to order them, like what columns you would like to. When you say select, you don't say select star, you say select. And then you name the columns, numbers, name, first name, last name, comma separated. I'm, I'm talking from a production standpoint. This is hell on earth. Do not do that. Um, a lot of bad consequences could happen from here. Now. Um, now, when you actually execute this, actually, well, there's no parameters anyway, right? So this is the command, but you cannot use this anymore. You are expecting some return. I don't need, of course, this. Uh, so what do we do, right? That's the question. So you say command dot um, execute reader, okay? And the execute reader will return to you an object which is called a SQL SQL light or SQL data reader which is okay. Now I'm going to have here var reader. And this more like you can think of it like a stream. It just opens up a stream and it just gives you the, the stuff, gives you the whole, um, the whole output. So you need to go through a while. Loop. And as you can see here, it's already recommended it for me. So while reader dot read, because this read is a Boolean, returns a Boolean. Can I read? Yes. Then it will just simply gives you the next row. Once it fails to retrieve the next row, it will stop and it says, OK, I read all the stuff which the query has returned. So OK, the moment I read something, I would like to populate a list where I can actually push it into a data grid view. So I can actually have here a var LST query result, for example, equals to new list of phone. Oh, I didn't create a phone class. All right, perfect time to create one. So I'm going to have here a, I'm going to put a nested one right there because I'm too lazy to create one. So I'm going to have here a public class. Uh, actually, look, not super nested like this. I'm going to have it here in the same file for now. And we said that we have a public int ID, get instead, and public int of uh, number, get and set. OK, so we need the class actually to hold these objects. Otherwise, you will not be able to. Uh, so I'm going to have here LST result. Da, 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 da. So LST query result dot add. And then I'm going to have a new phone. I'm going to construct a new phone object. And then I'm going to say ID reader dot get n32 and it's going to be actually the first one and then i'm going to have a uh, number equals to reader dot get n32 uh sorry this is zero zero uh, apologies and this is one right here 
This is the first column, this is the second column, right? Okay. And I say get int32 because I know that this is a, I know that the data type which I'm retrieving is an int. This guy, if you look at your uh, if you look at the modify table, this is an integer and this is an integer. If it was a string or any other type, you will actually have different type for this. So um, hang on. Reader dot. Uh, sorry, get. And then you have blob, which is for your uh, binary <laughs> large object. Um, OK, that happened. Uh, so blob is for binary large objects. You have Boolean, you have bytes, you have characters, you have um, you have the doubles and the floats and, and, and all that stuff. OK, you have GUIDs, all the other types which supported by SQLite. So because I have two, just two, uh, do I have get strings though? Either. Yep, there is a git string. So great. So we can do that too. But again, because I'm doing manual stuff, uh, I'm doing a lot of stuff manually. That's why it, it looks to you like this. So once I actually collected everything, all what I need to do is set to my data grid view. So data grid view result dot data source data source equals to null, and then data grid view dot result because I can actually refresh that later. Dot data source equals to lst query result. That's it. So if we start this. Um, What is happening? Oh, uh, what am I missing? Hang on. Okay, build succeeded. Probably Visual Studio bugged on me. Yep, it bugged. All right, so select all, and there we go. We got our stuff from the database right away. OK, so now you know update, create, update, delete. You know how to create database on a fly. Actually, you know how to create, yeah, literally database on the fly from file to create them, to create uh, a table manually, insert stuff manually, delete stuff manually, like everything from scratch without clicking any buttons in here. Right, so you can like generate the whole stuff. If you are, there are many applications that does that actually. Uh, that you can, that you need to generate your own database on the fly. Uh, obviously, you're gonna have to write uh, embedded SQL code like this, apparently, just for you to work with it. Um, but in any case, um, it, actually, there are people who still use ADO.NET, by the way, that has some similar way of working. So we write like embedded SQL code like this. Uh, I think if you are doing a, making a, it depends really like people making CMSs or making some sort of speci specific web applications that if you are making your own WordPress or something like that, or if you are making plugins for WordPress and the likes of WordPress, uh, then you're gonna actually be writing something similar to this maybe. Um, uh, and then back in the day, we were actually, this is how we interacted with databases before ORM just came to C-sharp. We had to write our own quote-unquote ORMs manually uh, like this. All right. And as you can see here, you can have a collision. Like it's it's like you get the data type coming from SQL and you have to, you have to morph it into your actual concrete data type. And I'm just wondering, <laughs> it's like Visual Studio really bugged out. All right. Um, actually, right now, all what is left for us to do uh, is, um, I think already Dennis have shown you the entity framework version of this. I can actually like uh, finish this in exactly 20 minutes, to be honest, and, and we can call this a day. Uh, so we go. I know that we went without a break, but um, yeah, just 20 minutes, and all of us are are free. So let me actually push this forward, uh, and let's upgrade this to entity framework kind of a kind of a story here so 
Now, Entity Framework, in fact, has this. Um, is an object relational mapper that does a lot of stuff for us automatically. And um, a majority of you guys, guys probably going to work with it that way. Um, let me actually like expand this a little bit. And push this aside right here. And push this aside right here. So. Yeah, fine, let it be here. So this was the manual part of the SQLite demo, right? Let's actually do the, let's actually do the actual entity framework stuff. So, um, first of all, we need something which is called a database context, and I'm going to call this database data context. Data context is going to be a public class. Coming inherits from something which is called a DB context. And it uses something which is called system.data.entity. This is coming from entity framework. Okay. Whoa. Okay, here's the actual documentation for the whole thing. Now, um, in order for me to communicate with the database, I need to actually like um, instantiate a new object of that thing. Because it inherits from a DB context, I can um, Inherit from, I mean, I can call the base class uh, data context. And I actually, I don't care even about the, the, the constructor anymore here. All what I care about in this, our very simple scenario is provide the name of the connection string. Now, the interesting part here, if I provide the key correctly, it will pick it up right from here. So if I say phone DB book path, and if I push it right, 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 right here, it will immediately work out of the box. I don't need to write that. Uh, I don't need to write data source equals to blah blah blah. Or I need to just simply inject it right there into the database. Now, um, now basically speaking, this is actually done. But when I, I need to do one more thing. Um, this phone class. Um, needs to be mapped to the actual database. So in order for me to map it, all what I need to do is add one more, um, something which is called a DB set. So public DB, which will act like the mapper between the logical, like your business logic and your database. So um, it's going to be called phone, phones, get and set. Is fine. Maybe get a private set, I think, but eh, fine, just for fun. So nobody can actually set this to anything else. Um, now that's actually done. This has to be, um, has to, but what we can say is we can tell it explicitly that. Um, It should have a an uh, actually like um we should say we should say it actually maps out to a table called uh, phones. Okay, so I'm gonna call this table and right here phones. Even though I don't need to because because using the plural that because you have this auto plural thing going with entity framework, it will pluralize the uh, the, the English name correctly anyway, but but I like to put it that way just to be like 100% clear and sure, and I don't need to think about too many things. Mm. Let me see. So which operation first we should do? Um, yeah, let's actually do a select all. I think this is going to be the easiest one. So select all entity framework. There we go. And I'm going to call this ETN select all EF so entity frame. Okay. Hopefully, I didn't forget anything. Um, so first of all, we need to instantiate a new object of data data context. Usually, you keep you would like to keep only one. You don't like to create um, var context equals to new. I mean, again, it depends really on how you would like to. Uh, 
some people like they have you have singletons uh, you can make a singleton out of this if you want to that executes on the lifetime of the application and then it gets destroyed after the application is done uh but again it's i mean it's a really uh, discussable thing here when it outside of the scope um uh, of this class it was to null data grid view result dot data source equals to and right now I think I can say context dot db um phones sorry dot uh yeah and that's it dot to list if I want to yeah that's 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 pretty much it so if I had to actually start let's see um I hope I didn't forget anything and it don't but explode in my face yes it did uh well, you cannot be no. Why are you no? What did I forget? Oh. What have I forgotten? So this should be actually, did I copy paste this? It's like, I think it should be, yep, I did. And this is actually hunting down correctly because it was working correctly. Mm. Uh, where is, uh, did we open and close the connection? I, I did not see. I, Mm, uh, actually, you don't need to anymore. Uh, we don't need okay. mm -hmm. no need no need to open and close connections. This was like when you do manual stuff. Um, but with entity framework, the thing will actually will handle everything for you. Could it be because of this? I mean, I held it out. This is not it, definitely. Uh, DB set. But thanks for the for the suggestion anyway. Oh. Um, what did I forget though? That's, that's a very good question now. Uh, did you initialize the list? No need to be initialized. It will actually do that no, for me too. I mean, these stuff, like, it actually maps out the stuff for me anyway. So the moment I, like, I mean, I can say, for example, something like this. Um, actually, also, option rela ob object relation mappers, by the way, are usually used for medium-sized applications. They are not used for large-sized applications, just to be clear here. Like, for example, if you are making a bank, if you are making an application for a bank, like somewhere down so in, in a certain level, nobody uses object relational mappers to talk to a database, by the way. Um, and you will see right now why in a minute. I just need to show. Um, hang on. I just need to find that window. Ah, the output. So this is an output window which I can use in order to debug my stuff. So let's see. Um, let's say something like var result equals to context of tones dot to list. And right here, I'm just going to have, yeah, and instantiate a new database concept, context, which is okay. And right here, I'm going to have a, um, for example, something along the lines of, uh, Debug so system. Oh yeah, fine. Let it let it actually import this debug dot right line. And when I say debug dot right line, it will actually give me this in the output form here in the output window. And I can say uh, context dot database dot log. 
just log me something. Um, Let me keep the output right there for me. So let's see, think. Hmm. Hang on. Let me see. Probably I'm missing something pretty obvious at this. Okay, good. So at least I just I'd like to get to here. Hmm. No, this is actually fun. Okay, let me check my app config again. So, you know, SQLite, this is okay, 100%. We actually have copied this into here, which is good. And wait a second, could it be? Wait, let's see. I mean, I highly doubt it, but. Yeah, obviously. Ah, there we go. I can see the inner exception. Okay, let's see the inner exception. Create database is not supported by the provider. Real database is not supported by the provider. Okay, so private set probably it's kicked it off because it probably uses a uh, reflection right there in order to get the stuff. So this is one thing. The second thing, which is a new one. Ha, <laughs> create database, create database. So if it tries to create a database, that means that this database doesn't exist, which is kind of weird. Because it actually exists. Right here. Last modified 209, which is OK. So if we refresh this. Thing. Yeah, it actually works. I remember seeing something similar, to be honest. Um, Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, in the lecture we used in app config, when we have a um, connection string, before the location of the file, we use data source equals. Like the connection string equals, yeah, then data source equals hmm. that location, maybe it's that. Like this? Mm. Hmm. Uh, just source. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. The first letter is a bigger data source. No, sorry, I didn't get it. Like here's data source or here's data source? Like that. Like you yes, just like wrote. Aha, uh -huh, okay. I mean, this would be weird if it works uh, because I mean, how come it was working before? But hey, let's give this one a try. Let's see, ding. Oh, OK. Thanks. <laughs> I guess I would never guess it, actually. Uh, honestly, like I have. Oh, actually, all right. Honestly, like I have like. um. Oh, yeah, actually, I have it. In, I mean, I have it in, on. The, yeah, I didn't see it. Honestly, I have it on my other computer. Um, I have the same demo. 
And actually, I have also data source in there. I just didn't didn't see it at all. But okay, thanks, thanks a ton. Uh, who was it? I cannot. I didn't look at them. It was me. Naida, thanks a lot, Naida. Thanks, thanks a ton. You're welcome. All right. Ooh, all right. That was a weird. Uh, that was a weird slippage right there. But thanks. Okay, great. Now we can move forward. Button. Hmm. What else is left? So we said that we're going to do a CROD, right? So I can actually finish this right away. So let's let's do an insert really quick. So this is going to be properties. Insert EF. is going to be BTN. Insert EF into the framework. Link. All right. Um, yeah, I can actually just write it down there. So var context equals to new data context. And again, I'm just going to utilize the same thing. Uh, I can simply say uh, context dot phones dot add, and then I can add a new phone based on the number which is going to be provided. So uh, I don't need to touch even the ID because the ID is an auto increment. So I'm just going to say a number, whoops, equals to uh, txt value dot text. And obviously it has to be int dot parse because this thing is an actual integer. Um, I should have maybe made the max text box, but in any case, and then you say context dot save changes. Save changes. There we go. I don't want to S async right now. Asynchronous programming is going to come up later. Yep, and that's pretty much it, actually. Uh, if you would like to write in uh, something in the database, so uh, not here, but, but, but here. So right now I can go ahead and write in whatever number I want. Insert. Ah, there we go. As you can see here, I mean, forget about the error because I don't have migrations and stuff like that. Migrations is like uh, how you will generate a database based on your classes. We don't do that here. You'll probably see this in Eris, yeah, then Eris Law. Um, but basically speaking, it generates this horrendous SQL code. Um, but in any case, so if I refresh this, right now I got my uh, record right there. OK, so let's complete the CRUD bit. Uh, I'm going to have one more, uh, which is going to be uh, delete, which is easy. Um, so it's going to be like delete EF, BTN, delete EF. And uh, var context. Again, you can cache this somewhere upstairs, and when you are done, you leave it. Um, for production, your code will be completely different. Phones dot remove. And right now, I need to select the actual thing, so I can simply say um, context dot uh, phones dot where, and then you can say okay, x goes to x dot id uh, equals equals whatever in the text box, so int.parse, uh, whatever in the text box, txt.id, txtid.txt. Um, and then dot first or default. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think this is it. Hopefully I didn't, um, Miss something. You can actually like even say select. Uh, select X goes to X, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and then save changes. So let's see. I would like to delete four. So I'm just going to go here. And put in four and just simply delete it. Does it think a nice message that uh, parse this method cannot be translated to a store expression? 
Oh, did I? What did I do right now? So, okay. Mm, maybe, maybe, maybe I should have simply said select at the end. As far as I remember. Select X goes to X or something like that. Um, just let me make sure that my code is similar to the one which I've written because I cannot remember. Yeah, I think it should be it. This is called hoisting, by the way. Uh, but in any case, let's see. Will you work with me? Nope. What method do it? Our string method. What, do you want me to separate this outside for you? Fine. Var ID. And just put this ID here. Probably because of the lazy execution, maybe it actually like hates it. And let's see again now. Oh, obviously. Did I put a four even there? OK, now it works. So uh, let me put this so four should be deleted. And it's gone. OK, perfect. Now, uh, probably because of the lazy execution. Hmm. We'll see. Now what we say here, so we had the delete. We need the update, right? So and this is going to be actually the last one right now. Um, so we did all the cruds, basically speaking, into one go. Or uh, this is going to be uh, update EF, yeah. and this is going to be BTN update. And if I double click this guy, I can say uh, var context equals to new data context. And then we're going to have context dot uh, phones dot. Um, well, actually, I can first need to get the phone. So phone equals to uh, context dot phones dot where um, and then I can get that thing. So X goes to X dot ID equals equals and then I'm going to have to literally do this. So ID equals equals ID. First or default, so you select that. There's a lot of elements so by mistake. Now that we have phone, uh, what I can do is just simply say phone dot number equals to txt or actually end dot parse txt dot pc value dot text. And then I can just simply say uh, phone dot actually context dot say changes. OK. So that's that. And now if I actually go here, um, in fact, I could have actually like for every time I finish this, I could have reflected this in the data grid view when I think about this right now. But but fine, I mean, it's it's too late right now. So let's see, uh, I would like to um, get, for example, this five compared to it from number six to two. So I'm just going to say for ID equals to two, I would like to, oh, sorry, for ID equals to five, I would like to set this to twos like this, and let's hope I didn't miss up anything. Ah, uh, I, I added too much tools. This is what happens when you <laughs> have an integer overflow. Uh, wait, uh, so what did we say? ID is five. Well, there we go. I hope it doesn't upset it much. There we go. So if I actually update this, there you go. Just made it into a bunch of tools. And yeah, that's it. So 
right now you know how to right now you have all the tools necessary for you to know how to create um a complete CRUD, right? So create, update, delete um, records. You can create right now based on this material, or based on this class, you can create tables uh, manually, you can create all of other stuff uh, 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 also manually, right? And using entity framework as well. So we covered like both sides of the story. Uh, maybe I can compress this and give it to you guys just as a reference if you want to. So if you would like to play with this manual creations of stuff, it's yeah, feel free to do so. Uh, yeah, that's that's actually pretty much it. I'm gonna stop recording.